So the title of the exhibition is Maximum Imaginativeness, um, Modern Czech Book Design, 1900 to 1950. Um, and the term maximum imaginativeness is taken from an essay by the artist Jindrich Sterski and Toyen, written in 1927, in which they explore the relationship between art and reality. Um, and it's associated with their personal ism, if we want to call it artificialism, in which for them was a concept capturing the abstract conscious of reality. And I was fascinated by this idea of abstract conscious of reality because that is essentially what books are. Um, and and I, um, we feature in the exhibition um, examples of a typeface by Ulrich Menhart, which I think are also incorporated into the cover design of the exhibition catalog. Um, and this um, typographer thought of a typeface kind of like a song. So uh, ju just like an or orchestra, a song doesn't exist unless it's performed, you have an orchestra. Um, he also thought that um, a typeface was a collective effort. So you need engravers and foundry workers, typesetters and printers. And I think that metaphor applies to the production of a book for it too is an abstraction of reality. Um, so to make uh, a world manifest to readers, the author, it's not just about the author, it's the editor, the illustrator, the typographer, the publisher and printer, not to mention the paper and ink manufacturers, the booksellers, the librarians who make the books available. Um, so so that's the my thinking, I think maximum imaginativeness kind of encapsulates all the people involved in trying to bring uh, the, a writer's kind of conception of reality um, into a concrete form. In a way, when I started to look at the material and, and tried to think of an organization, the books created their own pattern. <laughs> I, I know that doesn't sound very um, methodical, but I, you looked at it and you could see certain characteristics falling into place. Um, so and certain movements came to the foreground. Um, so I pretty much went through almost everything that the Fisher has and, and tried to, there was so much I had to exclude. <laughs> so you could do an exhibition on any one of the art move it, movements that I try to cover. So I begin from Art Nouveau, which actually in, in Czechoslovakia was not a term used. Uh, it was more symbolism and decadence. And we move on to uh, mysticism, on to bibliophilism, advances in typography, uh, to cubo-expressionism. And then the Czechs had their own artistic movement that was not anywhere else in Europe, poetism onto uh, artificialism, which was also a unique, it was actually a two-person art movement uh, of the artist Sztyrski and Toyen, onto surrealism, and then the exhibition ends with the end of all those isms, all those art movements with the occupation of Bohemia and Moravia by the Nazi regime, and, and what happens to the avant-garde, and then you see this resurfacing of decorative books. I would love for our visitors who come to see the exhibition to be awed by the craftsmanship involved in designing of the books, to be curious about the ideas and experimentation generated by their creators, whether from the artists to the writers or the printers to the publishers, and to not allow the Czech language to form a barrier to their understanding of the material. Um, to consider that it can be studied beyond the text itself. Um, for me, in organizing the exhibition, I had um, insights into avenues of research that have yet to be explored fully. Um, so I became more curious the more I knew about the material. So for instance, what was the role of women in printing and publishing in Prague during the interwar period? We have three represented in the exhibition about with whom we know very little. Uh, Erna Janska, Kamila Numanova, and Marie Krikova. 
But what about others? Um, what is the role of translation during the German occupation of Bohemia and Moravia? Uh, was it translation used as a means to circumvent censorship? Pursuing answers to these questions doesn't necessarily involve knowledge of Czech, but a certain degree of curiosity about the relationship between books and their historical context. And at the very minimum, I'd like visitors to come away with such types of questions. <laughs>